And here at KCO 5, we are committed to getting you familiar with the candidates as we head into election on November 6th. And today we're closing in on the race for House District 90, which is currently represented by Republican John Eccles. He is in this race facing off against Democratic candidate Lavelle Compton. Lavelle joins us in studio this morning. Good to see you. Good morning. You've cut your beard since the last I trimmed time. It, trimmed it just a little yeah, bit. You yeah, trimmed it since the last time yes, that you took that photo. <laughs> I was just telling you, I read your whole website yesterday. And one of the things that first stuck out to me is that you are a product of Oklahoma City Public Schools. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've lived my entire life here in Oklahoma City. Um, I started at Thelma Reese Parks Elementary. Um, then I moved into uh, middle school and high school at Class NSAS, graduated from there. Um, so being a product of public education makes running on the platform of fixing public education very important to me. Who, what else are, are you running on for your platform? What other issues sure. are you taking into this Absolutely. So race? The, yeah, the biggest thing that we go to the doors with is telling the voters that we're running on this idea of representation. And though that includes gender, race, uh, religious affiliation, it's bigger than that for me. What we're talking about is having a unifying voice that's willing to understand the issues that are in the community, also be willing to fix those and take those from all people. We can't just go out as an incumbent or as a candidate and give you the message that we want to deliver. It's important to me to understand that um, and to make sure that we can take whatever issues are important to you and get those things fixed. Um, the second thing is changing the culture of this strategic budget deficit that we have as a state. In layman's terms, we've spent a lot of time in the past few years making budget cuts, cutting, I'm sorry, making cuts to agencies and we just kind of accept that as the norm instead of working proactively to fix it. And we want to change that. And the last thing is criminal justice reform. Um, again, living in Northeast Oklahoma City, um, the statistics for myself, my friends, and my family was that one in three of us would end up in prison by the time we were 25. So to live in a state where we have the highest incarceration rate in the world, um, we don't have any real push for what I consider to be actual criminal justice reform, getting people the help that they need, uh, making sure they can reenter society and be successful. We have to fix that in order to have a successful state. This is the first time for you to campaign. Yes, ma'am, it is. You have never done that before. No. <laughs> and it sounds like a lot of these issues are, are really important to you. You've been Absolutely. thinking about these for a long time. What finally made you decide to run? What was it? Sure. Um, the catalyst for me would definitely be the teacher walkout. Um, I have the privilege of being a husband of a school counselor who works at Oklahoma City Public Schools. Um, she's been in education for the last seven years. So we have had the conversations about, you know, this could be potentially hurtful based on what happens in the legislative uh, cycle and process that uh, perhaps I may not have a job, perhaps my position is going to be cut. So in going to the walkout to join her and seeing some of the reactions from some of the representatives and legislators um, about getting the issue fixed, that made us happy. But on the other side of that, there's still a lot to be done. Um, and there was some of that you know, avoiding the topic, that there's still more work to do. Um, so that was it for me. I know there's that tagline out there that you can uh, march until it's time to run. So there's only so much advocacy that you can do from the side until you want to be a part. Um, that's the biggest thing for me to push me forward. So will we be seeing you and your family at that uh, second walkout tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. We will be there. Uh, Kristen will actually be one of the speakers tomorrow. So. Okay, fantastic. You mentioned, uh, you know, we both mentioned incumbent kind of right off the top there. Sure. Must be intimidating to go against absolutely. an incumbent. Absolutely. Uh, it's an uphill battle but you know what battle is not uphill right um, but you know it's it's bigger than a win or a loss for me um, someone told me when I first got into this race that if this is going to be the only thing that I do and, and I do end up losing um, and not never coming back again then obviously this wasn't meant for me to do um, you know the, the sense of what we're doing for the community will be dedicated to no matter what happens on November 6th and also the bigger part for me is that I may not be the person to spark the change here and make that actually happen but I know that someone else is watching someone can see the courage that I have um, and also the tenacity that it takes to go against you know the house majority leader yeah. as well as a sitting incumbent to make those changes and you'll never regret not not running absolutely and compared to John Eccles who is your opponent in this sure. race why are you the best man for the job um, you know, I consider myself to be a man of the people, um, a person that is willing to work in all senses of the community. What I have learned that is not my opinion, but comes from the opinion of the doors that I go to, is that they don't feel like they are a part of the legislative process. Um, I go to a door on both sides of the aisle or even in the middle. Um, and, you know, I knock and the first thing that I get is this surprise feeling that, wow, you're the first person to come to my house. Um, you're the first person to come and ask me, how do I feel about these things in terms of the legislative cycle? What do I want to see fixed? It makes me happy, but it also makes me sad that I'm running against a six year incumbent. And this is the first time someone has felt the need to be a part of the process. So that's the thing for me. Um, I've been out campaigning most of the year. Um, if I do win this election and I'm put in that seat, that's the biggest thing for me. I'm not going to be a shadow leader. Um, I want to make sure that I'm there with you to understand the issues that are there um, and that you'll always see me working for you. 
One of the issues that I came across when I was reading your website and the things that you're campaigning on was women's rights. And obviously sure. that piqued my interest. Absolutely. If I were to vote for you, how would my life as a woman in Oklahoma change? I, for me, I would take that, that courageousness that I feel does not exist within the majority of leaders uh, in the state of Oklahoma or the majority party in Oklahoma in the sense that we have to step away as men um, in terms of interfering with your rights to your health care and your rights in general as a woman. Um, I'm going to fight for those things. I'm going to make sure that you have the same level of representation as a man does. There's no more glass ceiling in terms of wages. And also, once again, just the rights that are there. Um, one of the best endorsements that I've had, or actually two, would say be from the Cleveland County Democratic Women um, and also from Planned Parenthood Great Plains um, because we are committed to making sure that women in this state have their rights completely. Uh, and we only have a few seconds left sure. here. Anything, any last words that you would like to say to constituents that Absolutely. will be heading out to, to vote for you on November 6th? Sure. So the biggest thing, um, I definitely want you to come out and vote for me. Um, please research me first to make sure that I align with the things that you and your family are looking for. Um, but we're here to make a change and we're here to make a sustainable change so that all Oklahomans can be successful, especially those in District 90. Lavelle Compton, so Thank nice to meet you. You as well. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you for your time. Thank and you. so let's take a look at this race one more time. We do have Representative John Eccles on our 9 o'clock show. That'll be happening Monday. We'll post both of these interviews onto our website, KOSU.com. You can find this one later today on the Meet the Candidates tab. Really, really easy to find there.